Right, everybody, let's talk about some projectile motion. So, uh, here we go. So, we got a beehive and uh, some honey dripping out of it. Very exciting. And then some bees, and the bees are chasing a bear. Bears love honey. Everybody knows that. So, the bear is going to jump out of the tree. The tree is 12 meters tall. That is a pretty tall tree. Uh, roughly four stories, right? Because we estimate three meters is about one story. And it's traveling at six meters per second. So about 12 miles an hour. Uh, and the question is, is really what is, the, what is the range of the bear? Which is another way of saying how far from the bottom of the tree does the bear land? Okay, so here we're, uh, we're adding to this picture. We're saying it's 12 meters high. All right, what we're going to be looking for is this distance down here. That's the range. And uh, this is a regular projectile motion problem. Remember that when we are doing these problems, the X and Y dimensions are independent of one another. That means that no matter what goes on in the X, the Y doesn't care about it. And whatever's going on in the Y, the X doesn't care about it. They are separate. So we can split up our work into this chart down here. This chart down here is the stuff that's going on in the X. Now there is no acceleration in the X direction whatsoever. And in the Y direction, we always have the negative 9.8 meters per second squared. In this course, we can always start off our projectile motion problems in this way. Continuing, we have the information that's given to us. Right? So we have our, our velocity, which is only in the x direction. It's a horizontal projectile. All right? We have our displacement, which is negative 12 meters, because the bear is going to end up 12 meters below where he started from. Our initial velocity in the y direction is 0, because the bear is projected horizontally. So none of that 6 meters per second is in the y direction. It's all in the x. In the x direction, the only equation that we are going to need is v equals d over t, because of that acceleration being equal to 0. Okay. In, the, in the y direction, we are going to be finding our time. Why? Because we had two unknowns in the x side, and we needed, to, we needed to find that time. Time is the only thing that can cross back and forth across that center axis, so we take our information, we substitute in, and we're getting our answer. Make sure that you do not forget to take the square root of these things. It is a requirement, otherwise you get it wrong, and that answer will be there. Okay, It'll be one of those things. So. We need to now take the square root to get our actual time. Once we get that actual time of 1.56 seconds, we can then move it back over to the x side and substitute it in. So we have, and I'm just going to drop off units here, we have 6 is equal to d over 1.56. All right, substituting those in, doing some algebra, multiplying both sides by 1.56, we get 9.4 is our distance at the bare be landing. Here we have a plane. Look at that plane flying across the sky. All right. Now, the, uh, as the plane moves, you see that it's carrying a crate as well. You notice that as the plane moves, right, from the left side to the right side, it and the crate are both moving at the same speed, right? So we take a look at it again. No matter how the plane is traveling, the two of them, including the pilot, everything in the plane is traveling at the same speed. So let's say the plane is traveling 100 meters per second. Well, what is, the, what is the speed that the crate is traveling? Well, it must also be traveling at 100 meters per second. It has to be. It's attached to the plane. Right? So if the plane is moving at 100 meters per second, the crate is moving at 100 meters per second. So if as the plane is flying now, let's say that it drops this crate. Well, what would the initial velocity in the x direction for the crate B? Well, it would be that 100 meters per second. In the y direction, it would be zero meters per second. All right, so let's, let's throw a couple pictures in. The plane is going to continue to fly. The plane continues to fly at 100 meters per second. And now the crate is being dropped. So let's, let's add in some, some pictures here. Here are, the, here are four planes. Okay, and we're going to add in four crates. So here's the first one. The crate has begun to fall. Now notice it is still directly below the plane, the same position. And the next one, it continues to fall. It is accelerating towards the ground, right? But in the x direction, its velocity is still 100 meters per second, and therefore it is staying directly below the plane. So it falls in, in this path, this, and we would describe this path as parabolic. And as it falls along that parabolic path, its x velocity is 100 meters per second 
the entire time. All right. The y velocity increases as time goes on, as it falls. So let's say that it takes five seconds for it to hit the ground. Can we find the altitude that the plane was when it dropped the crate? So how do we do that? Well, we have to substitute into these things, right? The same process as above. Even though this looks a little bit different, the key in this problem is still going to be time. Time is almost always going to be the, the piece that connects everything. However, in this case, you were given the time, which means you have the time on both the X and the Y. So the X and the Y are going to, in some sense, be totally independent of each other, right? We're not going to be able to find something in one and use it for the other. We could, of course, immediately find the range. Of this, of this crate from the time it's dropped to the time it hits the ground. We could, of course, also, which is what we're looking for, find the height by following the same routine that we've done before. We drop something, it hits the ground five seconds later, how high is it dropped from? Same process, okay? So uh, and again, over here, here comes us finding the range. 100 is equal to D over five, multiply both sides by five, and you get 500 meters, which means the crate traveled 500 meters during that time of the fall in the x direction. The velocity in the x direction, right, the horizontal velocity of the crate is going to remain that 100 meters the entire time. In the y direction, it will increase in that velocity. So what exactly is that y velocity going to be? Just like other linear motion problems that we've done, we're going to take a look at the information that's given to us in the y direction, right? Along here, we see we have it written in this column and say, well, what equation can we use? Well, because we have a time, because we have initial velocity, because we have an acceleration, we're looking for a final velocity. Vf is equal to Vi plus At is the perfect equation for us. Nice and straightforward, substituting into it, and we get our answer there of 49 meters per second. So we got this cannon here. It's up on a hill, so it has some height. It's firing horizontally, so it's a horizontal projectile, and it's going to hit that target over there, so we have a range. So take a look and make up some numbers, or I'll make up some numbers, and you're going to try to find the answer. Good luck.